to make sure. No shit! No shit! No shit! <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Hi, it's Joe Hall with Cointelegraph. I like to play games, and I think Bitcoiners do too. So I thought I'd interview Adam Back, CEO and co-founder of Blockstream, and one of the few people cited in the Bitcoin white paper, but while playing Jenga. Jenga is a game where you put blocks on top of the other in a chain. So I thought he might be quite good at it. Very good. And what about the future? What does the future hold for, for Adam Back? Yeah, so I think Bitcoin is like, very fertile ground for kind of applied R&D, and it, it covers lots of interrelated topics for mm -hmm. people with you know mathematical, computer science, programming. That's all interesting to me. So yeah, just more more Bitcoin. More Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like more blocks. Yeah, I don't know. We're we're getting there, aren't we? There's nothing really moving here. Yeah. I, these three here look ripe. Oh, like maybe that one? Oh, yeah. uh, okay, like yeah. that, that one looks yeah. like... But then that's creating a very unstable structure at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah steady hand here. Yeah. You know, you, you've seen the space, <laughs> whoa, you've seen the space evolve and develop over the past, what, 13, 14 years. Um, what advice would you give to someone that's, you know, picking up and learning, you know, the, the new generation, the Gen Zs, are approaching Bitcoin? or boomer coin, as some of them like to call it. Mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give to these guys that are starting out? Well, I think the, a good way to get involved is to um, sort of try to contribute to something mm -hmm. as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you learn things and you get to interact with people. And then, you know, after a while, people might, you know, you might be able to get a job on the basis of that. Uh, it's kind of a way, and that, that could be across many different things, you know, like user interface or documentation or educational materials, so mm -hmm. there's lots of different things you can do. So kind of running out of options here, but uh, this is like a bit hard to get anything that's stiff out. Yeah. Um, hmm. A little bit sweaty under here. Okay, um, and we haven't spoke about Blockstream yet. Obviously, you're very busy with satellite projects, putting yeah. Bitcoin in space. Um, yeah. Why? Why do we need Bitcoin in space? There's a few reasons. One is because it's cool and you can. Um, why do anything, right? Yeah, and, and another is that um, you know when you connect a Bitcoin node to the internet. It's a peer-to-peer -peer network, so it's kind of naturally advertising to anybody that tries to... Well, that's a bit surprising. <laughs> oh, no way. Now I've seen it all. I mean, wow, the whole thing is resting on one, and it's off-center, too. Give up lock-picking. Start jengering. You know, <laughs> it's, it's the real blockchain. Yeah, and, and so you get some kind of privacy because the... Receiving is anonymous. Orphan blocks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we need to get some more blockchain or Bitcoin puns into this. This guy here just seems like he's doing nothing. No, he's useful. Okay. Um, you know, you've got to see things differently after a while, haven't you? Refresh your I mean, there are things higher up, but the problem is it's got so unstable that you'd probably knock it off trying, right? Well, that's it. This, this one here is... Uh... So we're going to put Bitcoin in space because it's cool. Yeah, and I mean, it gives you some privacy because you can receive the data uh, anonymously because it's broadcast uh, and basically nobody can tell you're receiving it. So that's good for privacy. It's good for companies because, you know, they really need to make sure. No shit! No shit! No oh, shit! <laughs> Oops. Well, it was, it was like basically tapped out, right? There wasn't much <laughs> options left. Oh, wrecked. Well played, Adam. I, I, I mean, I expected to uh, to lose there with the man that is, you know, building blocks better than most people. But yeah. So, so yeah, it's like the satellite is good for companies to have a redundant internet connection to make sure they're on the right blockchain. Uh, if there's a local network issue or if a router is hacked to like uh, selectively block, um, prevent blocks passing through. Mm -hmm. And 
it also lowers the cost of staying of being on the network so for emerging markets the cost of a you know an internet connection fast enough to keep up with bitcoin is actually expensive compared to salaries whereas to us we don't think too much about it because you know we've got high speed 3g 4g on phones and a high speed internet and it doesn't cost that much relative to salaries so it, it reduces that cost because receiving the bulk data is free. So in the, in the update we did a few years ago, we added more bandwidth and more compression and set it up so that you could uh, sync a node from scratch by the satellite. It takes a week or two, but um, actually fetches all the history as well and reassembles mm -hmm. it. And there's some pretty cool kind of tech in there in terms of error correction and redundancy. So you can you know, jump in and receive enough of these chunks so that so you don't have to wait for like a repetition. Mm -hmm. You can just receive parts and you can miss some parts and there's a kind of redundancy code that allows you to reassemble the original from any sort of subset of these parts. I think we should probably leave it there. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Okay, cool. That's a wrap.